Um, I'm Margot Rahman. Uh, I was the general manager at the Hopkins Center for many years and retired as the acting director. I know Kip um, because when he moved to Norwich, uh, I met him immediately when he moved. So I've known him for his entire time in the Upper Valley. Kip invited me to his first showing in the Upper Valley where he had one photograph in the exhibit. And I was so amazed because as an astrophysicist, which is how I met him, um, I had no idea that he was actually an artist and a good artist and that he was passionate about what he did. And then I got hooked. So every time he's had an exhibit, I've gone and commented to him later about what I thought. Kip has a meticulous attention to detail in his photographs. And he chooses a frame when he, when he crops his work to bring you, I think, into a very clear, defined uh, picture and deceptively simple because it's very calming. Um, his choice of patterns, his choice of whether he's using black and white or color is very carefully done by him and his choice to present that to us um, brings us to a very still place. When I look at his photographs, I feel a serenity in all of them and an almost private moment that he captures. Some photography, I think, can bring you into conflict. It can, it can bring you into a moment in time where something is happening and there's an intense amount of action and you're, you're dropped into it. Um, I think of photographers who specialize in war conflicts, that kind of work, or social unrest, that kind of photography. And Kip purposely has chosen a different path. It's one that I think his training as an astrophysicist, where he's looking at the origins of our galaxy and he's working in things that are only in the imagination. He takes pictures of things that exist, but he is looking at them and hoping that we look at them with him in a way that changes them for us, in nature especially. I think that Kip's um, work as an astrophysicist for his entire career has been related to the Milky Way, to the galaxy, to looking at data, factual information that then can perhaps transform how scientists especially look at what the universe is. And that intense dedication he's had and the ability to be so disciplined and look very, very carefully at what's in front of him, I see in his photographs, especially the newest pieces with the mushrooms. Um, I know that those took multiple exposures to be able to come up with the prints that we're, we're now able to see at the exhibit. And his ability to take the patience required to make one print, to look at what he did for that depth of field, to me is pretty extraordinary because what we see is just in our one moment, an extraordinary picture transforming these mushrooms into other things, abstractions of light and dark. And even in, in some cases, um, I, I note that you can see other things in them the way you look at clouds <laughs> and can see pictures. That's extraordinary to me. I think for, for me also with the mushrooms, his tonal choices, because there, there is a, a coloring in them that while they, from a distance, look like they're black and white, when you get up close to them, there's a sense of a yellow in his ink that I find really subtle and lends itself to that physicality because they look like there's a surface on them that you should touch. And that again is, is it seems simple when you're looking at it as a viewer, but I think it's so complex when you actually look 
at it and realize how he made this image. Um, and I'm so pleased for him because as his work keeps moving in different directions, he will stop in whatever that direction is taking him and work on it and come up with these images that are unusual before he moves into the next idea. I think Kip looks at things and notices that there could be a pattern, um, whether it's the granite quarry pictures uh, or even some of his landscapes where he notes that you are invited by him to enter into this moment with whatever that is and see it in a little bit of a different way. He's not just representing the object. And it seems at first that he is. That's where I think it's deceptively simple because there may be a barn or again, the quarries or even the portraits that he has in, in the exhibit. And you think you're seeing something that is familiar to you. You recognize it. But then when you really start looking at it, you see what he's done to it in presenting that moment. And it is very much up to you to decide how you're going to react in that moment to the picture. Um, we all take selfies, we all take quick shots of things, and we're looking for a documentary representation of that thing. And Kip's work looks like that at first. You think that house is beautiful in the snow field or whatever, but then when you stop and really take a moment with it, he's doing something else. And he isn't afraid to do something different from most of his other work. One of my favorite pieces is the view from Led Ledyard Bridge of the Connecticut River. And he takes a moment that if you travel from Norwich or Vermont into Hanover, you've seen a hundred times, a thousand times, whatever it is. And what he does is make it very mysterious in how that print is realized. The scene is recognizable, the moment in the river and how it bends. But what his actual work does is let you have a very different moment with that experience you've had, you've seen from the bridge. I see that he was not afraid to go from landscapes to more abstract patterning, whether it was smoke or the water um, surging in those black and white pictures that are very fantastical in a way. And he didn't have a problem going from those into the patterns and, and taking those remarkable shots of the quarries. And the quarry pictures in black and white are stunning, but then the one, I think it's old something number eight, the color photo, that is just remarkable. That's an incredible picture. And then he went from that into looking at a couple portraits, then he goes into mushrooms. <laughs> he's, he's not restless. He's just willing to take another step and applying what he learned when he was working with one visual motivation into another. And that's what an artist does. And since everyone now is an artist with their cell phones, it's harder, I think, to have the patience to let someone like Kip's work hit you because you have to become still in that moment to make it work. It's not going to grab you in the dramatic way that many photographers can grab you. But what I find for Kip's work is that if you can give him that moment, there's a lot there that is very complex in a seemingly not complex composition. And that, that is remarkable to me.